you know, I might have to go get a Baltimore Ravens t-shirt or something. I love Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. They have been so good to me. Listen, I did not let Tulane's collapse at home on Saturday when the Green Wave blew a 24-0 lead and let Navy score 27 unanswered points in the second half for the comeback win. Stop me from coming right back with Baltimore as a top-rated 15-dime best bet yesterday as I improved to 4-0 in the NFL this season, 5-1 with my college and pro picks overall with that only blemish being Tulane. Again, as I said in yesterday's video report, you cannot let a loss, even a devastating loss, like Tulane, stop you. You can't lament the losses, nor can you celebrate the wins. Because if you do, as I always say, that next money-making opportunity, which for me was Baltimore yesterday, a game that I had isolated the minute the lines came out last Monday, those money-making opportunities... Well, they're staring you in the face, and if you don't take advantage of them, that money will just fly out the window and you'll never collect it. Now, this Raiders Saints game, not a fan of it at all. And that's why I'm going to break it down for you right here in depth for today's free selection. Um, that quirky little stat that I told you, where you will find the straight up winners will play out to about an 85 to 90% clip against the spread through the first eight to 10 weeks of the season. I warned you after week number one, where the straight up winners went 15 and one against the spread with the lone loser being Tennessee against Denver. I warned you that in week number two, you were gonna see two things happen. One, that that trend would be tough to predict because what would happen is two, the odds makers, generally week number two, are going to quickly readjust the lines because they, like us, now saw what happened week number one and that the dogs would come back and take a big bite out of everybody's ass in the second week of the season. And often they do it in week number three as well. And you saw the dogs rule the roost to a certain extent in week number two. Uh, the dogs yesterday going seven and eight against the spread. Now, pretty damn good. What happened in week number one, it was a split right down the middle, eight and eight. Normally week number one, the favorites have a very healthy advantage. This year, because of the pandemic, we didn't have it. And as I noted in the last week's report, uh, you didn't have it because the lines were just out of whack. Uh, numbers weren't not, were not only soft, they just weren't even sharp, which gave us as gamblers an even bigger advantage over the odds makers. But because we didn't have preseason, we didn't have OTAs, we didn't have preseason training camp, you didn't know what to expect. But it only took the line makers one week of action to sharpen those numbers. So I'm gonna tell you right now, week number three, next weekend, again, dogs generally have the advantage two and three, weeks two and three. That's how it usually breaks out. In terms of the straight up teams winning and covering the spread, 15 and one week number two, eight and seven so far this week. That's not to be unexpected, but you watch. As we continue, we will see that trend starting to increase. It's a quirky little stat. And again, as I always like to say, you know, if picking a straight up winners, led to making money that easily, we'd all be rich. We'd all be living in penthouses in Vegas. It's just not that easy. So let's talk about tonight. Um, this is a tough game. Listen, the Raiders, five and a half point favorite in their home debut. It would be nice if there were fans there, but that's just not real here in 2020. Uh, they are two and one in Monday night action in the second coming of John Gruden's uh, tenure at the helm of the Raiders. Um, you know, you look at last week's game, and I like the Raiders at Carolina. It was a game in which they scored in six of their first eight possessions. They had 23 first downs in that contest. They were six of eight on third downs. Derek Carr had a very good game, spread the wealth, uh, completed nine, uh, had completions to nine different receivers in that game, 22 for 30, 239 yards, one touchdown. His offensive line afforded him very good protection, zero sacks. But let's remember, the Carolina Panthers are in a rebuilding year. New coach with Matt Rule, new offensive and defensive coordinators. A Carolina defensive is starting three rookies, 
and it showed, and the Raiders took advantage. Josh Jacobs, three touchdowns, 25 carries, 93 yards. The Raiders were moving the ball. Did I mention it was a 34-30 final, right? What happened in the second half? Carolina and Terry Bridgewater had the Raiders on their heels for the entire second half, and it was a one-possession game, and the Raiders had to hang on for dear life. Now you have the Saints and Drew Brees coming to town. Well, listen, the Saints took care of business. They uh, beat Tampa Bay. Did they beat Tampa Bay, or did the Bucks hand them that game? I say it's the latter. They took advantage of two Tom Brady interceptions, some special teams turnovers by Tampa Bay, and they capitalized. Did Drew Brees have a good game? No. 18 for 30, 160 yards, two touchdowns. That is his fewest yards, 160, in a complete game that he has played since week 12 of the 2018 season. And remember, tonight, no Michael Thomas. How do you replace a guy, Michael Thomas, who has had 149 and 125 catches the past two years and nine touchdowns in each of those seasons. You don't. Oh, you have some other weapons, you know, Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray out of the backfield, Jared uh, Cook, uh, Taysom Hill, but you don't replace Michael Thomas. It's just not happening. And last week against the Buccaneers, the ground game was not productive. Murray, 15 carries, 48 yards. Uh, Kamara, 12 carries, 16 yards. Listen, the Raiders did a pretty good job of keeping Christian McCaffrey in, in check. 23 carries, 97 yards for the Panthers do everything back. And he had uh, three catches for 38 yards. What the Raiders didn't do was put any pressure, however, on Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, the Raiders' offensive line, I mentioned earlier, did a good job pass protecting Derek Carr, but they've got some injuries. Their right tackle, Trent Brown, has a calf injury. He's questionable, doubtful tonight. Their uh, guard, Richie Incognito, has an uh, Achilles injury. He's um, bothered by. He's expected, however, to play here tonight. The Saints were a great team on the road last year, covered their final seven road games, right? Uh, they've covered 17 of their last, or 13 of their last 14, 13 of their last 17 on the road as well. But we're talking about a five and a half number. You know, five is one of those numbers which is kind of like a no man's land. What do you do with five, five and a half? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's not six. It's not better than four. It's five and a half. I've got to take the Raiders in this contest. Uh, that's the only way I would play it. But again, I'm not playing it. So I like the Raiders. I'm 4-0 in the NFL. I can tell you that. I hit two out of three complimentary plays yesterday, giving you Seattle, giving you Arizona, just failing with the, the Steelers. So again, I do like uh, the Raiders here in their home debut, and that's the way I'm going to play it. So I wish you well. Uh, in terms of other handicappers here at the site, you might want to check out Scott Delaney. He had his first NFL max wager yesterday, cashing in with Seattle. Tonight, top-rated 100-dime NFL winner, number 13 out of 20 on the Monday night game. You get it for over half price off using the coupon code NIGHT, N-I-G-H-T. That'll do it. I wish you well, guys, and talk to you again tomorrow.